Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we have another day customer job and we're going to be molding this, this polycarbonate cylinder with a funnel shape and it also has a, a side core pull which is a, a hole that goes from the side of the part to the center through hole which would be done by a steel cylinder as well as a threaded port which needs to have a uh, screw that screws into the mold squirt the plastic and then unscrew the the core out so it's a double side pull there's a threaded part and a and an air cylinder actuated pin that goes for fluid flow from the side to the center and uh, this part didn't want to eject off the mold immediate or uh, automatically because there is a stripper plate so basically the part would get pushed off by the stripper and then get pulled back onto the core which was unfortunate i can show you a video so what we're going to do is have the orange robot here uh, pull the part off with the sprue and then it's going to take it over to this cutting station and then the white robot will grab the part and then the orange robot will tell the cutter here to go ahead and cut the sprue and then the white robot will take the white part over to the next workstation and the orange robot will take the sprue and dump it into a bucket to be reground. Anyway, so I will show you the process of doing all this. So first, let's take a look at how the Arduino-driven core pole and side piston work with the mold. I've got the GoPro here, so it's probably easier just to do some, some in-close video. Here is the A side of the mold, and this is a prototyping setup. I'm only going to make maybe 200 parts or so. So uh, the cavity in the mold here has this post in the middle and this is going to make a through hole in the part and then up here you can see that there's this it's it's maybe hard to see in the video but this is a hexagonal shaped steel rod with a machined in threaded core on the end and then in the middle of this hex rod is a 1 8 inch steel pin and what happens when the molding machine is ready to close the mold it will send a signal to the Arduino controller, which is in this blue box, to basically advance the steel pin down, which is controlled by this air cylinder right here. So the steel pin will, 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 ex will extend and then bottom out on the side of this, this uh, aluminum post. The next thing the Arduino does is it will screw this hex rod down and basically expose the threaded tip of this hex rod into the body uh, or into the cavity of the A side of the mold. Then the mold will then close on this cavity with the two core features extended inside, squirt plastic in through this, um, this sprue right here, and then the runner will bring the plastic around and through the gate, which is right there, and fill this mold up with plastic. I put the gate down here because it's going to be opposite of the steel pin, which is not really supported well on the end. So I wanted the plastic to fill in line with the pin so it didn't push the pin off one side or the other. After that, the molding machine will give a signal back to the Arduino and tell it I'm about to open. So then what will happen is the Arduino will retract the screw by turning this hex rod with this gear train that you can probably see inside of there uh, using the stepper motor on the side. So the stepper motor has a tiny gear on its shaft, which then is geared down with the larger gears to turn this hex shaft, which is, which is basically floating in the center of a hex uh, cut shape in the center of this final gear. So that when this gear turns, we are turning this hex shaft and we're actually advancing and or uh, advancing and retracting the hex because of this, uh, this thread on the end of the hex, which is threaded into a threaded hole in the side of the mold cavity. Hopefully that all made sense. But, so the molding machine will, will tell the Arduino retract all the, all the parts, all the side poles in the core, and then when the molding machine senses with these switches right here that everything is pulled out, then the machine will open and the part will be stuck on the B side. And then the molding machine will have this stripper plate, which is this steel structure, push the part off of the core. Now the problem we're having is that there's actual features in the stripper plate as well that create the bottom ring of the part. And the stripper plate kind of holds onto the part and it can't, 
knock it off of the core. Uh, so the stripper plate will move in and out and the part kind of follows and, and slips back onto the core every time. So we're gonna use the robot, orange up here, to pluck the part out of the mold uh, using the sprue, which is basically stuck in this hole as well. Anyway, so I will set up and let's uh, start running that operation. So we're using this polycarbonate plastic. It's in pellet form and it's been sitting in the dryer for a few hours so it should be nice and desiccated and ready to go. You need to dry the plastic out before you melt it in the injection molding machine. If you don't, a lot of plastics will just foam out because there's so much water inside of the, uh, absorbed into the plastic that when you melt it, that water turns into steam bubbles and you, you can get kind of a foamy mess. And we got our, kind of have quite the prototyping setup. So there's wires and power supplies everywhere but there's still room to load the hopper with polycarb. Okay, so we're looking at the molding machine controller and this molding machine has programmable inputs and outputs and it's commonly called TTL logic and I believe that means transistor to transistor logic. So when I talk about signals between the robots and the molding machine and the Arduino, I'm really talking about 24 volt signals that signal other pieces of equipment to do something. And so in the molding machine, there is a page for inputs and outputs. So this thing has four outputs and four inputs. Over here is output. So these are signals that are sent to robots and or the Arduino. And you can create situations where the molding machine will send out a uh, signal. For instance, the start on pin number one, when the start of the mold close happens, which is another way of saying the molding machine starts to run its cycle, it will send a 24 volt signal to the Arduino uh, for 22 seconds. And all of these different states can be used to create an automation profile. All right, so while we're waiting for the molding machine to heat up the plastic, I can show you about controlling the robot. The robot is controlled using this control pendant here, which is basically a handheld computer screen with a six dimensional mouse and different uh, plus and minuses for the different axes. I don't really use the mouse, but I just use the, the different axes. The, and I do have an episode that I filmed maybe four months ago where I show how to program these robots. So if you wanna check that out, you'll get a little more information. I'll just be brief on this one. So basically this control pendant has uh, panic bars on the back and you have to hold this, this button in the middle position to actually activate the robot. Uh, the controller has a few operating modes. Right now we're in automatic mode. So this robot is ready to run once it gets a signal to start. We can also go by flipping a switch here, we can go to a teach mode. And in teach mode, you actually use this, this controller is basically a big joystick. And what you do after you hold down the panic button here, and you see that the axes turned on, is you can move the robot around in X, Y, Z coordinate system, like Cartesian coordinates. I can move the robot around and effectively what you do, and then here's the orientation. I can change basically X, Y, Z, and A, B, C, and A, B, and C are the three angles for the end of the robot. The process that you follow is that you, you manually guide the robot around to the positions that you like. Here's the third axis. And once you're there, then you tell, you start writing your program by recording the points. So most of these robot programs, you just move the robot around to wherever you wanna go, and then you record that point. And then you move it to the next position you wanna go, and then you record that point as well. And you create this list. And basically we're creating this list of points that we're recording and, and interleaved within these uh, points of, of location are other things like turn on output one or wait for two seconds, or you can also put a loop in. So this, this program just runs constantly over and over again, which is how we're gonna run it. 
And that's usually how I run automation. And there's also statements like if then statements. So that is a nutshell of programming these robots. And the, so the white robot has another one of these control pendants. And I can write the code for both of these robots. And within this program, I'm telling them to wait for the second robot to do whatever it wants to do. And then I'll tell the second robot, OK, once you're done, send a signal uh, on one of the inputs, a 24 volt signal, to the second robot to continue doing what it's going to do. And you can swap, you can basically pass the baton between several robots using the 24 volt TTL logic, which is basically just a bunch of light switches on and off for different triggers for the different robots to do things. So it's pretty, pretty simple, but at the same time very powerful to get a lot of automation going. Uh, and any machine that takes or sends out 24 volt signals can talk to the rest of the machines in here, which is cool. All right, I think we are close to being to temperature. Let me check. Yep, so we're at temperature. So I'm going to purge the plastic and start the cycle, and then I'll meet you back once I get it going. <laughs> All right, so I've discovered a few problems and updates I need to perform. The first is when I initially programmed these robots, I had this orange robot drop the scrap sprue down at the end of its cycle, but I didn't realize that the closed mold is under there. So you can see that part sitting on top of the mold. That's a problem. The other issue is I need to refine the pluck position of the gripper because uh, before I was just sticking a part on the end of that core. So the location of the part is not quite right. So the location of the, of the part on the mold translates to the location of the, of the clipper over here. And you can see that the clipper didn't actually clip it. And then uh, of course, you know, it drops the part back onto my mold. So I need to update this orange robot to drop the sprue someplace else, as well as update the location of the uh, grip, either on the, on the, in the mold side, or update the location where the sprue interfaces with this uh, cutter right here. And then, you know, and then refine White's uh, ability to grab the part in the right spot. So let's see how this happens again. So the robot comes in, and you can see how the part is deeper in the, on the, sitting on the core. It does pull it off, but there's some slip and some other things. So I may have to do a double eject, and let's see how we do over here. So here I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretty soon grab, oh, here we go. There it cut it, but the white robot did not grab it. And then here we dropped our, <laughs> our <laughs> sprue on top of our mold again. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is touch up the, the pluck position of the robot. So I'm moving the robot in in automatic mode, and now I'm going to switch over to teach mode. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm manually going to update how the robot grabs onto the sprue. So I'm, a, I'm off camera, but you can imagine I'm looking in here right next to you and I'm adjusting the location of the claw. And a lot of times there's something called the pounce position where you want to get the, the robot claw in close to the thing that you're going to grab. And I'm moving with X, Y, and Z right now. And so once you're in the pounce position, then you can actually come down and do the actual grab itself. It's a common practice, at least so I've been told, or what I do. So now what I'm going to do is update the angle of the, of the end effector of the robot, or the claw, which is attached to this cube here. And I always mess up plus and minus <laughs> on these things. OK, so a little more angle fix. You have to watch the entire body of the robot because all of the arm segments are articulating to make your claw in the right position that you're looking at. And you got to make sure you're not going to crash into anything while you're doing this. Uh, OK, so I think I will touch up this location. So on the controller, you could take a, a previous location, touch it up a little bit, and then literally hit a button called touch up, and it will save the new location. All right, now we're going to go down to the actual pounce. So we come down, we grab. OK. Now I'm, uh, I'm going to move to the line that says, which basically defines the point where we pull the part off of the mold. And I am going to manually move back away from the mold face. And probably do a peeling action, too. Uh, you know what? I think our part, our part's been sitting on the mold too long, so it's constricted onto the mold. What I can do now is update the pull position, or the pull away position. And we'll have to run the program again to get a fresh part. OK, so that will be the pulled out position. And we'll have to imagine that there's a part stuck in its uh, gripper right now. So the white robot is still active in its program, and it's waiting for an input from the orange robot, which it will get here pretty soon. OK, so the white robot does its thing. And it's going to come back. And now what we're going to do, so right now the, the orange robot is going back to its home position. But we can reverse that. And now I am going to add a new location. And I'm going to instruct the orange robot to release its sprue. OK, so right here is the scrap bucket that I added to our setup. And this is going to collect all of the sprues that the orange robot cuts off of the part. And now what we're going to do is we're going to train the orange robot to, with a new action, to move over to the scrap bucket and drop the scrap screw, uh, sprue into the bucket. So I am still in teach mode with the orange robot. So, and I'm down at the last line of the robot before it goes back home. So manually, I'm going, to, I'm going to instruct the robot using the joystick or the XYZ commands to come over to the scrap bin. It may come up a little bit in Z. And then go over so that our claw is basically in the middle of our bucket, like so. And then I'm going to tell it to teach this position. So command and then motion and linear. So I'm saying the linear motion. And we're going to have it not be continuous. We're going to say, yeah, two meters per second is the max velocity. So these robots go pretty fast. And then command OK. So let me go ahead and hit the, the start button on the robot, because the molding machine is waiting for the robot. And whenever I start things, especially if you change a program, it's good to be ready on the emergency stop for both machines. 
Oh, I got the play set at zero. So I'm going to speed up the robot now to 50% and have e-stop ready. Okay. So the robot told the, Ar the molding machine to go and the molding machine told the Arduino to screw its screw down and put its, uh, and, and extend its core bin. There you can see the robot would have dropped the sprue off into the, into the trash bin there. And now it's sitting here waiting for the next signal from the molding machine that says you can go ahead and pull the part. The molding machine sent a signal to the Arduino to unscrew. So this red light or this red indicator here is, is the molding machine saying it's waiting for the Arduino to finish unscrewing the core. And when the switches switch, that says everything is retracted out of the core, then the molding machine will open, which is now. Now the molding machine is telling the robot, I have um, uh, opened and you can pull the part, and it did. So we may actually slow this thing down and now we can adjust the position of the clip. So let me, let me stop it all together and then we can zoom in on, on refining our location for the clipping of the part. So I am going to hit the play button to 1% speed and you'll see how the robot is starting to bring the part up and what we want to do is cut this gate right here. And we need to basically update both robots to do this. So it looks like the clipper is going to hit. So I'm going to go ahead, you know, we're going to have a problem with the tip of the cutter hitting the, the runner. So I'm going to switch the orange robot to teach mode. So we're still in the same position on the program, but now we want to start to update the location because we have an actual true position of the part on the gripper as it came out of the hot mold, uh, the part did. So now I'm going to start fine tuning the location of, the, of this point that's recorded in the program for the orange robot. So now we're going to bring our, our part forward and then we're going to bring it towards us as well so that our, our gate is kind of centered in the middle. Tricky with the camera in here, but at least we can do a demonstration. <laughs> and I am going to touch up this part or this point. Yes. And now I'm going to touch up the next point, which is the actual clip position itself, like so. Usually you spend an hour fussing with this kind of stuff, but you know, let's keep moving. Uh, okay, so touch up this point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the white robot to teach mode as well. So now we're gonna bring the robot up to its pounce. Okay, we can see how our updated program behaves here. Okay, so the white robot did its thing. I'm gonna be over here with the molding machine making sure nothing bad happens. That's good. So the molding machine starts. We're going to go through our dry cycle. I got this closing slow because it takes a while for that screw to actually engage and screw down. So now we're injecting plastic and the Arduino will, once it sees a signal that the molding machine wants to open, it will start to unscrew the screw and it pulled the steel core pin out. And this robot is basically waiting for the Arduino to finish. And I need to tighten up the structure a little bit. I can see it moving a little bit when it's, when it's unscrewing. And then once the Arduino tells molding machine I'm good, it opens and then the robot comes in and pulls out the part. And let's see how we do here. Oh, that looked more promising. Huh. Oh, cycle time trip. Oh, well there it went. It worked. And then back. Whoop. Oh, okay. So the molding machine didn't like the fact that I was waiting too long. So now what I need to do is go back into automatic mode. 
turn on the pump, turn everything back on. And now it's waiting for the robot to give it the start signal. So it's got to dry cycle one more time. So now when the robot pulls the part out and it leaves, it should give the signal to start for the molding machine. I may have to tell the molding machine that this takes a little longer than normal because if the molding machine waits too long, then it, it goes into caution mode. Okay, so now we open our mold. We do a double eject. Robot comes and grabs the part, pulls the part off. Robot tells the molding machine to close and the Arduino screws its screw down. Now over here we can see how we do on clipping. And it works. All right. And then the white robot gets ready to clip the next. So it's good to break out your automation into, into chunks. Like I don't really have to worry about what the white robot is doing because I've proven it out. So then it's, we can just focus on the Arduino core pull stuff, the orange robot and the molding machines, just make sure this stuff is good. I like to keep my hand on the emergency stop. <laughs> okay. We may be in automatic mode now, so let's see how this clip happens. There you go. Let me get the, uh, the GoPro so we can see some up close action. Now the molding machine opens and here's our part. And we do a double stripper plate eject and then the robot comes and grabs it. Pulls it off. Now the mold closes and you can see that pin is down and now the screw is screwing down. You can see how it's screwing there. Okay, the molding machine is waiting for the input from the Arduino that says that the core pull features have pulled out of the cavity of the mold. And you can see how we're waiting to open the mold on the molding machine page. Okay, got the signal. So now our robot will come down and grab our part. Now we're gonna follow the orange robot. The robot gives a signal to the molding machine and it comes over here to clip the part and does the pounce and then the white robot grabs the part, they clip it. Orange takes the part and, or the scrap and dumps it into the scrap bin and then it's back over here ready to pull the next part out. Here we're waiting again for the core pull to pull up. It's kind of a high pitched screw, so it takes a while. I don't think I can get my, a good view of the gears running, but that stepper motor is spinning those gears that I showed you earlier. And you can see the, um, the hex rod there actually went to a start position after it found its home from the limit switch. Again, we're gonna follow, this time we're gonna follow the white robot. So here we go. Orange robot tells the white robot grab it, it cuts it, and then tells the white robot to go, and it dumps the part into the bin there. And then it goes back to get ready for the next uh, clip and grab. So that's it. We are running pretty good. Oh, actually we can go and check out the, uh, the real time map here. I think, so you can see how molding machine is waiting for the mold to open. So it's kind of frozen there and it's waiting for inputs. And I think these actually turn green when you see it, or maybe not. Yeah, so here on the programmable page, you can see now it's waiting to close. And there that switch happened to, or the output happened when the molding machine is closing, which was sent to the Arduino. These guys do their thing again. And we are now running through the normal sequence of the injection molding.
and now this guy is waiting for, I believe, this switch to go green. It may not actually show it green. It would be cool if it did. Ah, I guess it didn't. Oh, well. And then again, you can see how the, uh, it's already in this position. So that's it. Let's get some time lapse of this thing running. <laughs> Should be fun to watch. Let me get another view of the clip. There we go. <laughs> fun to play with these things, but they are dangerous, so, you know, be careful. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the demonstration of a prototyping automation setup. It certainly isn't like a long run production, especially since I've got banana plugs kind of hanging and, and rat's nest of spaghetti mess of wires everywhere. But anyway, uh, these robots are handy even for short prototyping runs so that you're not spending the next four hours clipping parts and separating things. Because every time you pick something up and clip something and set it down, that's like five seconds, and if you have like a thousand parts, then that's basically all day long. So these robots help prevent all of that mundane, boring work. Next week, we are going to continue with the mounting of the green robot on the other molding machine so that we can have three of these working together if we want to. And I hope to see you next week. Special thanks to all my patrons and subscribers, and if you like what you see here, then please click the thumbs up and subscribe to the show. Everything helps uh, promote this uh, learning process. So, I'll see you all next week, and thanks for watching. Uh, goodbye. You're going to be nuts.